continuing talking about our MySQL, Maria database, uh, MariaDB type tutorials, and we are into day four. And today we are going to continue talking about tables, basically, and uh, the creation of. But we talked about last time we talked about creating just a table and putting some data into it. This time we're going to talk about a uh, we're going to talk about creating a parent table, a child parent a parent child relationship. So if I can remember my password and my user ID and type that right be able to get into database and if we see our tables we've got our just we've got our one table if you remember tutorial one is our table and we had just a base sort of like an address kind of table <clears throat> so this time we're going to create a sort of like a user we're going to call him tutorial parent so this is what we're looking at making next and we're going to see a lot of similarities that we've seen before. So we've got a parent ID is the the key, the primary key that we talked about before. Before it was, whoops, I have to make sure I hit the right keys when I switch. Before we had T1 ID for tutorial one, this one is going to be uh, T parent ID, so tutorial parent ID. And again, not in all auto increment, so we're going to be able to count those up. Now here we're going to actually because this is the parent we have to we're going to give it a child record so we are going to point to it by giving it t1id so wherever we create a record here and let's make sure i still have some of those two to Tutor. I got too many. Type it too many letters. Okay, so there's nothing in there. So let's go see if I can do an insert real quick. Got one. Let's go back. Uh, so we'll do four. And we'll create another one. Three and a two. And we'll just go with three records for now. So if we go back there, so we've got, essentially we call these our address type records. So we've got those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to grab it. We're gonna to refer to it based on that ID. So that ID, we're gonna store here. And then for this record, this, we'll call it a user. We're gonna have a name, let's call it username. I like that a little better. Um, and it's again, we're just gonna have a varchar 100, not null. We're gonna use a default. We're gonna talk about defaults a little bit more here. I'll come back to that. And then email, login, I'll we'll call it user password just because it's better. I don't know if PWD will work, but we are going to call it user login. So we'll, and these we've seen with the varchars. Now we have a primary key, which we've talked about before. Um, he doesn't need to be, I don't know why I had that typed twice. And then um, now the way we're going to link is we have to create a constraint and we're going to call, and we give it a constraint name. So we're just going to call it simple fk for simple foreign key and we're going to tell the type of constraint so foreign key is the type of constraint and the way we do it with this one is we're going to say what column in this this table so t1 id we're going to link that to by the references command by that keyword to the table name tutorial one and then t1 id in there so we could call this something else i could call this like if I want to call this uh, address ID and call this address ID, then it would link those two that way, even though I'm changing the names. But for consistency, oh, accidentally hit the wrong one. I don't want to save right now. Consistency, let's keep the names the same so it's a little easier to deal with our inserts and things of that nature. I need to stop accidentally saving stuff. Now, let's talk about that default. We've we have not used the default keyword before, uh, but we have mentioned the idea of there being default values that can be assigned. And if you look at the description, you can see where there's a default. So here, default's always null. We haven't really messed with that before. 
and that is the default. If you don't give it one, the default is going to be null. But now when we create this table, and let's hope that I entered everything properly so that it oops, so that it does create, it does. Now if I look at tutorial parent, then we're gonna see that the default is not assigned. So let's actually do a record into that. Uh, I'm gonna insert into tutorial parent and let's give it uh, t1 ID because we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and tie it into an address uh, username email user login and password okay and value oh, let's do this with values are going to be so we need to use a valid well we'll we do need to use a valid T1 ID. So we've got one, two, and three are valid. So let's just tie it to, well, let's tie it to three. We'll start, we'll be a little different. Tie it to three. The uh, username is gonna be user one. The email, let's call it user one at test.com. Uh, let's see, login will be user one. And a password. Let's we'll call it test user one. Now let's see if that works. It does. So now, if we do that, select star from tutorial parent. If I enter that letter right, then we'll see that we've got a record in there. Now, let's take that same record. So I said that it has to be valid. It has to exist. So now we know that we have values one, two, and three in our that tutorial one table. Let's change it to five and see what happens. Now we get this. It's going to tell us we can't do that because we cannot update or add or update a child row. Um, the foreign key constraint fails. And so remember, we created this foreign key and named it simple fk well it tells us exactly that in tutorial parent the constraint simple fk foreign key that one that we created it failed so it's telling us right there that foreign key tells us that doesn't exist which says okay that t1 id that we sent does not exist in tutorial one as a t1 id value so we're cool now we can however because this is a this has created a many to one relationship, so we can reuse that address that we used before. It's not like a primary key; it doesn't have to be unique. And we can create user two, and we're gonna come in. And now, if we look at all our tables, we can see that it's got that. Even though two and both of them refer to uh, T one ID. And we can see here where it tried to increment, actually it tried because of this insert, that failed insert, it did try to increment the tparent ID, but failed. So it just said, well, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the next available ID or the next ID in my counting up in my auto increment. So we have our values there. Now, if we want to get further, if we wanna actually utilize this as part of a you know, report or something like that, We can do uh, select star, we used that before, from, and this is where we're gonna use what's called an inner join. So we're gonna select everything from tutorial parent. So we want each of these records here, but we also wanna, instead of that ID, we, we also wanna see what was their address information. So in that case, and we're gonna do an alias, so we're gonna call it as TP, so that'll be, so tu tutorial parent is instead going to be TP as we refer to it elsewhere. And then we do this thing called an inner join, which means that we are going to only grab records where this next thing occurs. So we're gonna inner join uh, tutorial one, and we'll call it TO. Uh, no, we're not because that's, it doesn't like that. We'll call it T1 on. So it says, I'm gonna take data from this other table and I'm gonna join it where uh, it's on instead of a where clause, so we're tp.t1id equals the record in t1, t1, whoop, t1 
t1.t1id. And so now we can see that it pulls this very long thing here, but it's going to pull, so we can see the parent record here, uh, parent, one ID, username, all the way through the password, and then here's the matching record from the tutorial one table. And so you can see down here where it comes into address name. Now you can get a little more, you know, you can clean that up a little bit so you don't see the duplicates. So I could instead, and I'm going to use these aliases that I showed. So I can do like tp dot uh, username, comma tp dot email, comma tp dot user login, comma. I'm not going to show the password, so I'm going to do tp dot address name, comma. Oh, that's not tp now. That's t1. So it's in the T1 table. T1 dot city and T1 dot state. Whoop. Oh, and T1 dot zip. So now I can clean that up a little bit. And I have the username, email, and user login from the parent. And then from the address, I have the name city state zip. So that gives me a join that I can do. Now, another thing I wanted to touch on in this episode uh, we've talked about is being able to alter a table. So once I've created a table, we've seen that like here. Once I've created a table before, we would drop it and then recreate it. But instead, I can do an alter. And let me see if I've got one that's like, uh, that'll probably work. Whoop. No, don't want that. There we go. And in that, what you do is, so I can take, let's say I want to add a column. And we can use this for modify as well, but for right now, let's go ahead and do alter table. Uh, let's see, what do I want to add? Let's go ahead and add to the user table, let's, uh, we'll add a, a login date. So we're, cause we haven't seen dates before. So we're gonna alter table, tutorial parent. Add column. And we're gonna give it a name. So it will be, uh, let's try creation. Whoops creation date, it's going to be a date time, and it can be null. Actually, I don't think it's CO, I don't think it's column. Let's go see. I bet it is go way back. I think it is, it's just a COL. As we are scrolling back through a lot of commands to see if I can find where I last use it, which a long time ago, apparently. Wow, I got way back on that. Okay, it may be. Okay, I'm just going to do it this way. It's better to, oh, if I can do the paste. There, okay, I got it right. All right, so now, if we look, uh, describe tutorial parent. We can see that now I add, it's this date, uh, this creation date, date time is in there. And if I look from there, I uh, will see. Oops, I need to do an F. If I look here, I see that it's null anywhere. Now I can do an update. I'm just going to make it very simple right now just to show you. Uh, update tutorial parent. And I'm going to set the creation date to 
now. So now I can see where, now I can see dates there. Now you have, uh, there are variations in dates. You can do a date time, which is what we did, where you've got a time, you have a date, 2241, and then you have a time. You can also do just a date or just a time or a timestamp or a year. Now timestamp, oh, I do wanna do that is if I've got that here, here we go. So let's add, so that was created. And let's get the column updation, update date. Timestamp. Oh. And I'll get into some of the uh, update date. There we go. And he's going to be default by null, so we should be good. So if we come in here, and now if we do the same thing and we do that update in the timestamp, instead we do update date. Let me show you what a timestamp looks like. And we will get more into dates and times and everything else at a later date and later discussions. Uh, but here, because it's going to format it, even though it's a timestamp, it's going to give me that full date time. But depending on what you pull out of it, you'll get a, a long integer, which is basically a system time kind of thing. Uh, this one's nice enough to format stuff. If I wanted to do, um, oops, if I wanted to add, let's say, creation, uh, let's see, let's call it start year. And make it a year. Then we can look at it here. I'm going to see they're all known, but if we update it, then we will find out. Oh, it doesn't like to do that. So start year, it doesn't like to do it with a now. So I have to format that out. So instead, we'll just do 2022. And we can see that, there you go, got all our data there. So I think that'll probably cover it for this time. We're in a good spot. So we have added a child, a parent-child relationship in our data. We have talked about dates and we're gonna continue digging into those as we go into future episodes. So for now, we'll wrap this one up. Uh, we'll have show notes for a lot of these calls as well, as always. And uh, as always, go out there, have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.